I know, I know, I'm a little late to the party, but NVIDIA's GTX 1080, we're talking 2560 CUDA cores, 9 teraflops of floating point performance, and 8 gigabytes of VRAM. Oh, and I should mention at a price tag that rivals the GTX 980 Ti's. Seems a little too good to be true. I want this video to be a little bit different because I'm going to be honest, I mean, come on, let's be real here. You guys have already seen the other videos by the other big YouTubers in regards to the 1080. So what I want to do in this video specifically is compare the 1080's performance and specifications to that of the two current flagship NVIDIA graphics cards, the Titan X and the 980 Ti. As I said in the beginning, a single 1080 packs 9 teraflops of performance compared to the Titan X's 7 and the 980 Ti's 6.5. If you want to dig a little deeper in that, you'll find that the 980's came out to around 5.3. So it makes sense that when Nvidia said that two 980's is an SLI averaged around the same frame rates as a single 1080, if you just want to add those teraflops together and assume a 60-80% to 80 margin for SLI because you're not really going to get two times the performance when you SLI anything, or Crossfire for that matter, you get about 9 teraflops. If you just want to add them. It doesn't work like that in real life, but you can kind of gauge what NVIDIA was trying to tell you when they said that. So expect literally twice the performance of a 980. And if you want to SLI two 980s, you're, you're barely going to scrape the surface of what the 1080 can handle and for about twice the price of a 1080 as well. That's pretty phenomenal. Another cool thing about the 1080 is the fact that it only requires a single 8-pin power connector. Compare this to the 980, which required two 3-pin power connectors on its reference card. Now, the TDPs are roughly the same. The 1080 does draw a bit more power, but keep in mind it's literally twice as powerful as a 980, so that's pretty phenomenal in itself. Also keep in mind that as third-party manufacturers begin rolling out their versions of the 1080, the power allocation might change. So maybe an 8-pin and a 6-pin will be present, or two 6-pins, it, it will vary. So just the reference version is what I'm referring to in, at this point in time, only because the reference cooler is the one that you'll be able to buy come May 27th. The 1080 will also house 8 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory, which is an improvement upon GDDR5, which you'll find in most modern graphics cards. This new memory will allow for clock speeds approaching and exceeding 10 GHz, which is about 3 GHz above what the 980 and the TI variants of the older generation Maxwell cards were able to achieve with their GDDR5 memory. Nonetheless, 8 GB is definitely more than enough for 1080p and 1440p gaming. Now, considering this card seems like it's targeted more towards 4K gaming and ultra-wide 1440p gaming, 8 GB is probably enough for a lot of AAA titles in 4K, as long as you don't max everything out. Uh, but until we get our hands on the card, we won't be able to gauge how much VRAM we should expect to see or need for a card like this. The card's also going to come VR equipped, which should be of no surprise at all, but one thing NVIDIA is saying is that this card is going to be twice as fast as the Titan X when it comes to handling VR workloads, which is impressive in itself because the 1080 only has 2,560 CUDA cores compared to the Titan X's 3,072. Now keep in mind here, we're talking about a difference between 16 nanometer and 28 nanometer architectures that could play a huge role in terms of power allocation, efficiency, and overall effectiveness in processing these VR workloads. But keep in mind that this is NVIDIA's claim and no one else's. So until we get our hands on the cards, as I said earlier, we're just gonna have to take their word for it. It does seem a bit hard for me to personally believe that a card like the 1080 should perform twice as fast as the Titan X. Uh, so we're definitely gonna have to get our hands on one of those and see for ourselves if this claim is true. In terms of physical appearance, not much has changed between the 980 and the 1080 reference cooler design, save a few sharp edges that have been carved into the top of the 1080, which you won't see anyway in most cases unless you have one of those cases that make your video card juxtapose upright vertically. Uh, but in most cases you won't see that. What you will see are the green lettering and the black backplate that are included with the card, similar of course to the 980. No surprise there. It's very difficult to see what kind of cooling potential is housed inside the 1080, but I can imagine that given both cards reach about the same peak temperatures under load, the same cooler from the 980 was implemented into the 1080. But you can't really fault the green team for that, right? I mean, why would they spend more money to redesign a cooler that already would have worked in the first place? One last thing before I go, NVIDIA has been a bit misleading about the actual price of the 1080. So if you want one ordered May 27th and shipped May 27th, you're going to be paying 699 US dollars for their reference cooler stock founders edition 1080. If you want one for around $599, which is the market suggested retail price for a 1080, you're going to be waiting a bit longer because these cards are going to be made by third party manufacturers. Now the PCBs will be the same in most cases, sometimes they change them just for the heck of it, but in most cases the PCB will be the same, but they're going to put their own 
third party coolers on the 1080 and sell them for around 600 bucks. This of course is just the suggested price by Nvidia. These prices will vary definitely. Uh, so a card by Asus may cost $650 and a card by Gigabyte may cost $580. I doubt it, but you can see that the prices will vary. So if you wanna wait for those cheaper cards, you will have to wait, that's the point. But if you want one up front, Nvidia is charging a $100 premium for their Founders Edition 1080. With that said, you're getting a lot for your money. Uh, this card is phenomenally fast from what I've seen so far. I cannot wait to get my hands on one in the studio. Stay tuned for that. If you're interested in the 980 for whatever reason, that's, that's kind of gonna be a dead video after this week, I imagine. Uh, you can check out the card above me and you kind of get a sense for what the 1080 will look like in terms of its actual reference design. But apart from that, uh, stay tuned for, for 1080s everywhere, all over YouTube, all over the web. Seems to be a pretty good deal, right? With that said, be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you think it deserves one, give it a thumbs down if you think it doesn't, and click the subscribe button if you haven't already, stay tuned for more 1080 and 1070 stuff, and our Xeon 1230v5 build from Skylake, which will be coming uh, tomorrow, actually. The last of my parts should be in tomorrow. That'll be an awesome video, stay tuned for that. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.